Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and my current cookie cutter tutorial is a little out of date. I've, I've changed the process a little bit after learning a little bit more, and I've got a better one. I've got a better one, so, so let's do it. Are you ready? Oh, can't go yet. Let's make it more exciting. There we go. Rainbows are exciting. Let's do this. You ready? Go. Hey, all right, welcome back. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is take a silhouette photo, something that's black and white, or any color and any other color, and turn that into a simple cookie cutter. It's really easy to do, and I'm gonna use Illustrator and Photoshop to show you how to do it. So first what I did in Google is search for silhouette. I even spelled it right, that's amazing. Ah, here's a Batman one. Okay, I already saved this down, so we're gonna use this, this Batman image. Let's click on Batman. There's Batman. I like it. Okay. I've already saved it to the computer, and now I need to load it into Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to open, and there's Batman. Uh, Batman, is, Batman is fairly large, as you can tell. The first thing we need to do is click on it, image trace, hit the drop down arrow, and go to black and white logo. All right, it's traced. It happens really fast on these on these silhouettes. Click the expand button at the top. All right, so because the photo was black and white, it's going to trace it and have two different layers. It's going to have a black layer, which is the Batman. And it's going to have a white layer, which is the background. There it is. We don't need that white layer. Let's get rid of it and throw it in the trash. Now that we've thrown it in the trash, let's find out how big our Batman is. All right. It's probably a different way to do this, but I always grab a handle, hold down shift, and then start to adjust. So it looks like it's 211 millimeters wide and 308 millimeters tall. On normal cookie cutters, I usually try to keep them around four inches in size on the longest dimension. So that would be the height. Four inches in millimeters is roughly 100. So I'm gonna make it 100 millimeters. It's easy enough. There it is. There is our Batman. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. We got plenty of room. Hi, Batman. How are you? I bet he's doing fine. Now that we have it sized correctly, we need to make a copy of the layer after outlining it. So with this layer selected, I'm going to click outline on the Pathfinder panel. There's our Batman. He's outlined. That's easy enough. Let's make a copy of that layer. Easy. The bottom one is going to be called base because it's going to be the base of the cookie cutter. The top one is going to be called cutter because it's going to be the cutter part of the cookie cutter. We'll start with the cutter. Go ahead and eyeball off the base just so we get it out of the way. Up here in the stroke, you're going to want to change that to 0.75 millimeters. I find that works best with nozzles that are 0.5 and 0.4 millimeters in diameter. If you have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and you want to make cookie cutters anywhere between 0.65 and 0.75 millimeters is acceptable for the the cutter I mean you can always make it bitter, bigger hey you know experiment play around that's that's what this is for okay now that the cutter has been set at 0.75 millimeters for the stroke we need to go to object expand uncheck fill make sure stroke is checked and hit OK that essentially turns the line stroke into its own object. Well, that's easy enough. Now we need to turn off the cutter, turn on the base, let's select it. For the base, I want you to do six millimeters. It's a little bit bigger, but it's nice and sturdy. With that, now at six, we do the same thing. We go to expand, uncheck fill, make sure stroke is checked and hit okay. And there's our shape. And at this point, we're done. We're done with Illustrator. We did a really good job. Good job, you guys. You deserve a round of applause. Let's open up Photoshop. Ha! <laughs> There's that. I love that. Looks nice. I'm going to create a new document. I choose US paper just because the dimensions are okay. Make sure it's RGB color and the background should be transparent. I'm going to rename this layer to Cutter. I'm going to make a copy 
And then I'm going to rename this layer to base. Doesn't matter which order they're in, but nah, that just looks better. All right, go back into Adobe Illustrator, select the base right over here, make sure it's highlighted, hit Command C or Control C if you're on a PC. Choose the base, hit Command or Control V to paste. You want to paste as a path, that is very important. Let's go back and do the same to the cutter. I'm going to oops, eyeball on, choose the cutter. I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back to Photoshop. I'm going to paste it on the cutter layer as a path. All right, we've got our things pasted. Now what we need to do is extrude them into 3D space. I have my 3D tab right here. If you don't see yours, under Window, choose 3D, and it'll show up for you. All right, now that this path is selected, I'm going to go to 3D. My source is a work path, and I'm going to do 3D extrusion and hit Create. It's turning along. It has a default extrusion depth of this number, which we don't need. For the cutter, I want you to use 25 millimeters. Go back to Layers, select the path that we pasted for the base, go to 3D Work Path, 3D Extrusion, and Create. For the base, you need to make it 2 millimeters. All right. Back at Layers, make sure both are selected, and at the top go to 3D and choose Merge 3D Layers. That takes all of the objects that we've created and puts them into one layer. So here's the base, here's the cutter. Select both. Up here under Properties, you want to go to the Coordinates section, I guess. And here for X, at the angle, you want to do minus 90. Oh, shoot. I didn't do that right. Let's go back. Oh, look, I didn't have both selected. There's both selected. Coordinates. See, even I mess up sometimes. Minus 90. And that sets the cookie cutter in, in conjunction with the ground level. So they're both on the same uh, plane, I think is the right words. I don't know. I hope I'm using the right words. Now, individually select each one of these 3D objects and choose Move to Ground. There's the base. There's the cutter. Select Scene and see how the mouse, it kind of has that little dot with a with an arrow going around. That means you can move it around. And there is our cookie cutter. That's a Batman. Good job, you guys. Hey, we got this far. Ah, you need to know how to take it into a slicing program so you can print it out. That's easy. Make sure Scene is selected and under Properties, click this icon. That's the print. Make sure it's local, STL file, and millimeters. For detail level, choose medium. You could choose high, but it's not needed and it takes a long time. Then you want to click this button. That's going to start the process of unifying the scene, making sure the meshes are correct. It's going to wash its hands before it eats dinner. It's going to blow up a balloon and give it to a small child so that, so that I can see the smile on their face. Um, this is probably the times in which Batman is is on the rooftops looking for, for evil to, to take care of. Oh, look, it's done. It's done. I don't have to say any more words. This is our 3D object, and it's looking pretty good. I got to tell you. All right. You can hit Export. And see, it's already saved as an STL, so you can say, Batman. Well, there we go. We've saved the STL file. Let's bring up Simplify 3D. There's our Batman. Open it up. And there he is. There's Batman. Look at that. The object looks good. I always look for lines or spaces that wouldn't work out. As you can see here, I've got my Wombot selected. It's got a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Let's see how that looks when it tries to print. Here's our print preview. And this is what you want to look for when you're doing some things. Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like it doesn't know what to do there. That's kind of interesting. We can do some of the layers to see how they print. Uh, I think for the most part, for the most part, this would print OK. In fact, Let's change it. Let's change it to my GMAX 1.5 XT Plus. That's a much larger printer, so we can recenter it. I'm going to hit prepare to print again. Let's just let's see how it looks with a slightly bigger nozzle. Oops, boy, scrolling just doesn't get along with me very well, I guess. All right, 
that looks pretty good. It looks like it looks like it would fill in nicely. One of the things to pay attention to are the are the lines that are close together, and this these look like they're they're solid. So that's that's good. This is a good cookie cutter. I would say this is worthy of printing. All right. Well, hey, that's it. Thanks for coming along on this little cookie cutter adventure. I hope this update kind of kind of helps in in getting you back on track and making some cookie cutters. If you have any specific questions at all, feel free to get in touch with me. I I used to sell a lot of cookie cutters, so I I have a decent idea of what to do. Um, yeah, well, that's it. Hey, um, this was a quick video, but I want to thank you guys. Give it a thumbs up if you like tutorials about cookies or if you just like cookies in general. Share this video around. Let your friends know that, hey, I I like cookies and I like how Joel makes cookie cutters. Uh, let's see, what else? Subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get more content up here and I always enjoy doing videos like this. So let me know if this worked out or if there's something else you'd, you'd like to see. A big thanks to my patrons who have supported through patreon.com. Uh, a big thanks to you. Hey, thanks for watching. This is this is awesome. I really appreciate it. So, so let's see. Let's get this going here. Let's go back to that. And oh yeah, we're gonna do this. Ready? Ready? As all always. <laughs> high five. As always. High five.